Meditation is the act of refinding your essence. Not that your essence is ever lost, but if one's attention leaves the essence and enters into the periphery of consciousness, one could say enters into the husk, then one enters into the egoic matrix of desire and fear. One enters into a state of being captured by forces such as appetite and memory, nostalgia that can produce anxiety and depression and lust and greed and all of those vices that cause us to lose our balance and act in ways that are inaccurate and unloving and in violation of our own true nature and which bring backlashes of suffering. And so the more that one engages in the act of refining one's essence until there is no longer a tendency to forget it, and life becomes an eternal meditation, Until such time, the act of meditation brings one back to that essence that is pure white light, pure love, pure bodiless presence. It is the God seed within each of you. The God seed is beautiful sublimely peaceful and loveful and with an inherent wisdom and power of navigating through the matrix of this holographic simulation without disturbance with poise with clarity with compassion with understanding of the nature of the various forms of illusion that beings can fall into and that one can serve to help them free themselves from. And from that place of the essence that is unmoving, that is free of any of those tendencies of capture by maya, by illusion. One can see how the spider of the ego throws out its web and then catches itself as its own victim in that web. And it is able to pull back the web of maya into the essence and dissolve that matrix of illusion in which it had been trapped. And once it has done that for itself at an individual level, it is able to function in the same way at a more macrocosmic level of withdrawing the negative energies from an environment in which beings become trapped in conflicts and in confusions and 
territorial defensiveness. And that skill and art of withdrawing the conflictive energies so that love again reigns in all relationships. That art of peacemaking, that art of communion in the sacred essence that is shared by all of us is the essence of sustaining community or sustaining a family or a couple relationship. But one cannot even sustain one's own life in happiness until one has found one's essence and has decided to abide in that and as that and not fall into the false identity of the spider, always weaving its web of words in its mind that produces its own suffering. And once one is free of the tendency of weaving such a web, one sees reality very differently because it becomes very clear that the God seed shines in every being with infinitely precious, luminous, eternal beauty. And through that recognition, there is an honoring and a respect and an ability to recognize that the will of God rules over this world, even though it may rule in secret and at times have to overrule the ego's illusory tendencies that create the illusion of suffering. But once one recognizes the essence, one sees that the suffering itself is not suffering, except from the ego's own illusory perspective. But that it is always a teaching, always a blessing, always an action that brings balance, and brings growth and brings new life. And that everything that happens that seems to be out of balance is actually part of a greater balance that is never lost. And so from the perspective of the God seed, all is perfect. Nothing has to be improved. Nothing has to be changed. There's no need to be on some quest of perfectionism when all is already as it must be. And because of that perspective, one can accept. One can allow. One need not judge, one need not intervene, one need not resist. There's a recognition that even what seems to be a glitch or a schism or a problem is actually a self-liberating action that will bring a greater wholeness even through what seems to be a crack up and a loss of that wholeness. But everything moves internally and externally in that direction of the center. And what must be broken is unreal but it always enables the revelation of what is real and true and whole and that can never be broken 
never be lost, what never dies, what is eternally present, that does not change through all the flux of time. And from that essence then, one is able to accept the movements of life and death with serenity. And one is able to understand the push and pull of the forces that are attempting to grow, to spread their wings, to gain their full empowerment in the manifest plane. And it is clear that to do that, that things must happen that cannot be controlled or contained, but that these forces themselves are guided by a wisdom that is beyond that of any individual mind. And it is when we are fully at peace with the natural and supernatural processes that are happening all around us and within us and pervading the cosmos and that we are one with all of that. We are not different from it, from that super essence from which we all derive our being and our lives and our life energy and our ability to think and to feel. And the only function of the consciousness is to bring itself back into that state of perfect acceptance. And in that state there is silence because there is no desire to speak. There is no desire to change reality or to alter relationships. There is no desire for power or for something lacking or freedom for something that feels it is enchained because all of these are conceptual and there is an acceptance that the conceptual itself can be what it is without disturbing the real and that the flux of the internal essence of meaning itself. Although apparently it changes, discovers that change itself is a manifestation of changelessness in the same way that time is a manifestation of eternity. And thus there is a non-duality, as the Buddhists have sustained, between samsara and nirvana. Or as Adi Shankara said in his famous syllogism, the world is unreal, only Brahman, the absolute God essence, is real. But the world is only that absolute essence in its state of shining to infinity. And so what seems like a multiplicity is simply the rays of a single star, a single source of light and love and intelligence that shines through each of us and pervades us all and enables the co-creation of this dream of reality that is even now in flux toward its own fulfillment, its own highest potentiality for beauty and goodness.
And all of this happens naturally because of the nature of that God seed, that essence, which is already and always perfect goodness and infinite power and beauty and love that has the benevolent comprehension of the totality as part of its being. That state of manifesting as the essence creates a vibrational frequency, an energy field with which every being wants to be in resonance because it is your own essential state of resonance. It is your own abode, the home of the soul that seeks a home of peace, finds it in an energy field in which that essence sustains the entire field with love. And thus each being allows itself to light up to let that essence be free of the obscuring tendencies of mind and emotion. And as more and more lights are lit in this cosmic menorah in which each of us is an eternal candle flaming its beauty and its divine light to the world, we create a light that cannot be extinguished. and that cannot be improved and whose silent shining is the eternal living symbol of the presence of God who never withdraws, who never abandons, who is always there in the absolute accurate way at that essential moment of our need. And because of that, we can rest at peace in that essence, knowing that we are supported by the Supreme Power and release ourselves from nostalgia for some lost entities on whom we projected love and goodness and empowerment that would protect. And we can find that again within the essence that each of us is. And through that claiming of the essence as the self, here and now, not in some future, but now, allow the opening of the heart and the refinding of that essence to be unobscured. And life itself will find itself as a flow of joy. And it is this that is uncovering itself, revealing itself, and spreading itself throughout every region of this dying planet, so that in its very death throes, new life will sprout that manifests this eternal essence everywhere and always without fail. And may we accept this cycle of death and life as part of our deathless nature, part of the eternal cycle through which we grow ever more godly, ever more beautiful, ever more wise, and ever more in union with that perfection that is our home our love, our life, our being, and the only gift that we have to offer one another. And what brings us together as a community. May we serve the community and the world through the power that this essence gives us. 
to love. Mm -hmm.